a sin to see another person's nakedness. Now, your first reaction might be, well, it is, of course, right? Like, you know, you see somebody else's nakedness. That's, that's obviously sinful. But I, I want to show you the, the only... Let me go to a couple of verses here. Leviticus 20. Now, Leviticus 18 and Leviticus 20, um, some people refer to as the holiness code, but it's talking about fornication, and it often uses this phrase to uncover somebody's nakedness, uncover the nakedness of your father, your mother, uncover the nakedness of your sister, and it gives a whole list of people that we are not meant to uncover their nakedness. Now, this is where somebody might get the idea, well, you shouldn't look at another person's nakedness because, you know, obviously if it's condemning uncovering their nakedness, how can you then look at another person's nakedness? But when the Bible uses the phrase to uncover somebody's nakedness, is it literally talking about just taking off their clothes and looking at their nakedness? Or is it talking about more than that? Because obviously if you read Leviticus 18 and you read Leviticus 20, it's not talking about just looking at a person's nakedness. It's obviously talking about uncovering their nakedness to lie with that person as you lie with a woman. Uh, so look at what it says here in Leviticus 20. I'll show you oh, a couple of verses. Let's go first to Leviticus 18. I just missed that. Six. I'll just give you a couple of examples. So you can see there, if you want to just skim over verse 7, 8, 9, you can see there that it talks about, you know, thou shalt, shalt thou not uncover you know, the nakedness of thy mother shalt thou not uncover, she is thy mother. The nakedness of thy sister, verse 9, the daughter of thy father, uh, even their nakedness thou shalt not uncover. So is this just talking about undressing them, right? Or them undressing themselves and you looking at their nakedness? Or is it talking about actually sleeping with them? Well, if you look at Leviticus 18.6, it gives the context of this whole passage. It says, none of you shall approach to any that is near of kin to him to uncover their nakedness. I am the Lord. So what does this approach mean? Well, if we look at Leviticus 20, we know that it's talking about sleeping with them, you know, actually committing fornication. Let's go to verse 11. It says here, And the man that lieth with his father's wife hath uncovered his father's, na father's nakedness. Both of them shall surely be put to death. Their blood shall be upon them. Uh, let's look, at, look at, at another one where it sort of parallels the two. It says here, And if a man lie with his uncle's wife, he hath uncovered his uncle's nakedness. They shall bear their sin. They shall die childless. So I don't believe these passages are teaching that you can't uncover their, it's a sin necessarily to uncover their nakedness. These passages are actually saying that you shouldn't sleep with near of kin, right? Because if it's a sin to see somebody's nakedness, you think, well, if, if this passage, think about it, right? If this passage is talking about uncovering the nakedness of your daughter, right? So that means it if, if it was a sin to see your daughter's nakedness, then it would be a sin for me to bathe my daughter, right? For me to change her diaper, things like that. So you've got to think, you know, is this passage talking about just the looking on a person's nakedness or is it talking about sleeping with somebody? Because I don't believe you can have it both ways, right? Because in this passage, it's only mentioning close of kin. So if it's saying here that you can't look on a person that is um, f not related to you, their nakedness, then, oh yeah, I lost my thought there. So if, if it's talking about sleeping with somebody that's, that's close to you, then obviously if that's a sin to sleep with somebody near of kin to you, it can't be talking about far relatives because anyone we marry is far related from us, right? So it can't be talking about both because it's talking about near of kin. If it's talking about far of kin also, that would need to be assumed. But that would be wrong because obviously I married my wife, she's, she's far of kin from me, and I've uncovered her nakedness. We've slept together, but that's not a sin. So you see, if it's talking about the, carnal, the carnality of it and actually sleeping with somebody, it only refers to just near of kin. But if it's talking about just looking at somebody's nakedness, then you obviously look at the nakedness of your children when you bathe them and things like that. So you can't be talking about that either. But I'll, I'll bring up another point either. So no, it's not a sin, I believe, to see someone's nakedness. I believe Leviticus 18 and 20 are just using the euphemism to describe fornication. But you can't actually use this verse just to say it's a sin just to look at somebody's nakedness because I don't believe that's exactly what it's teaching. So since it only mentions close relatives, we would need to assume God extends the law to further relatives to take the contrary position. This is what I was trying to explain. 
Does that mean we can't marry with further relatives also? So you can't have it both ways. It's either a passage that's just talking about close relatives or it's talking about all and then you can't apply it consistently. Now if it's a sin to look at somebody's nakedness, what about when it's forced upon you? You know, you think you're at a soccer game, right? And you know how you have streakers run onto the field, right? They take all their clothes off because they want attention, right? Their glory's in their shame. They run on the soccer field and they're just streaking. They're showing everyone their nakedness. Everything's hanging out. Now, it's probably a sin for them to do that because they're obviously being immodest and they want, they want people to look at them. But if, if that's just put in front of you and you've just sinned, have you sinned? But if it's a sin to see somebody's nakedness, then you would have just sinned, right? Even though you cannot help but see that person's nakedness because they're the ones that have put it in front of you. Now here's some reasons why I don't think you know, it's, it's a sin to see somebody's nakedness. Number one is you know, Adam and Eve, we read about in the beginning. Now before the fall, before they ate of the tree, they were both naked, weren't they? And they were seeing each other's nakedness before they were married. Now if it was a sin just to see somebody's nakedness, wouldn't they have already sinned before eating of the fruit of the tree? Right? But it wasn't. They didn't fall until Adam ate of the fruit of the tree and that was the first sin. Um, so I think there's some evidence there that looking at a person's nakedness, because Adam and Eve were both naked, they had not sinned yet. So therefore it's not a sin to see somebody's nakedness. But here I think is the strongest evidence. And I'll show you in Isaiah 20. I don't know if you're familiar with this passage in Isaiah 20, but this is an interesting passage. It's a short chapter. It's only six verses. But let's read it together and just see what it says. It says here in verse 20, in chapter 20. In the year that Tartan came unto Ashdod, when Sargon, the king of Assyria, sent him, and fought against Ashdod and took it, at the same time spake the Lord by Isaiah the son of Amos, saying, Go and loose the sackcloth from off thy loins, and put off thy shoe from thy foot. And he did so, walking naked and barefoot. And the Lord said, Like as my servant Isaiah hath walked naked and barefoot, Three years for a sign and a wonder upon Egypt and upon Ethiopia. So shall the king of Assyria lead away the Egyptian, Egyptians prisoners. And we read this verse. And the Ethiopians captives, young and old, naked and barefoot, even with their buttocks uncovered to the shame of Egypt. And they shall be afraid and ashamed of Ethiopia, their expectation, and of Egypt, their glory. And the inhabitant of this isle shall say in that day, Behold, such is our expectation, whither we flee for help to be delivered from the king of Assyria, and how shall we escape? So what is God commanding Isaiah to do here in, in, in verse 20? He's telling Isaiah to preach for three years naked. Now, I don't believe he's just in, you know, like you see Jesus getting crucified. He's in like this, these little undies actually covering his nakedness. Because it says here that like Isaiah walked naked, even it says here in verse um, 4, that the Ethiopians and the Egyptians, they're going to be carried away, young and old, naked and barefoot, even with their buttocks and covered, to the shame of Egypt. So the whole idea of Isaiah preaching and walking naked and barefoot was to be a sign to these people. Now, number one, if it's a sin to show somebody your nakedness, how can God command Isaiah to show his nakedness for three years? Three years walking with his nakedness shown, right? And the other thing is, if it's a sin to see somebody's nakedness, obviously God says here in verse 2, uh, where did it say? Uh, sorry, verse 3, he says, Like as my servant Isaiah hath walked naked and barefoot three years for a sign and a wonder and upon Egypt and upon Ethiopia. So obviously God told Isaiah to do this with the expectation that people would see him for three years naked and that would be the sign. So that along with Adam and Eve being naked and not yet sinned, along with you know, the verses in Leviticus 18 and Leviticus 20 talking about sleeping together and using that euphemism, I don't think they can be used to support not looking at somebody's nakedness. I don't believe it's a sin to see somebody's nakedness or for a person to show their nakedness. Again, I believe it's more an issue of modesty, and I'll address that in my sermon on modesty, but... I'm, what, the point I'm just trying to make here, and I know maybe it's an uncomfortable truth, but what I'm saying is it's not a sin in and of itself to show your nakedness or to uncover your nakedness. Why? Because if it is, Isaiah would be in sin here. 
And God would have commanded Isaiah to be in sin because he said, Isaiah, you go do this. Go walk naked, preach for three years. People are going to see you naked and that's going to be a sign and a wonder to them. So it's not a sin. And, and what are some other important reasons, you know, some sort of secondary reasons why it's important to realize that it's not a sin to show your nakedness? Because if to show your nakedness or to see somebody's nakedness was to be sinful, then it would be wrong to do things like this. It would be wrong to show your nakedness for medical reasons, right? Let's say you need to go see a, see a specialist, but the only specialist is a male, and it's like maybe for breast cancer or something. You know, you're not, are you not going to reveal yourself to not see that specialist? You know, I'm not saying these are the reasons why it ought not to be sinful, but these are the implications. If it is sinful, then it would be wrong to do that in every circumstance. Um, medical reasons. Um, let's say emergencies, right? Let's say somebody's like clothes are on fire and you need to like rip their clothes off and leave them naked. If it was a sin to see somebody's nakedness, it would be wrong to do that. There'd be no way to save them because you'd be sinning and it's never right to sin. So you can see how there it's not an issue of is it a sin to see somebody's nakedness or to uncover their nakedness. It's a, it's a question of modesty. It's about, and modesty is more about intention and reasons and, and the conscience and things like that. So medical reasons, emergencies. I mentioned, you know, families that bathe together because if it was a sin to see your daughter's nakedness or a mother to see her son's nakedness, then they can't, you can't change their diaper. It always have to be the father changing the daughter's diaper and the mother changing the son's diaper. But, you know, that's not, that's not, always pr that's not even practical. You know, because if the father's at work, who's changing the son's diaper? You have to call, you know, a neighbor. But, it, you know, is it, not, is it sinful because now it's like not family? It's, it's just like, it's, it, you know, it's hard to like have this position and actually practice it consistently because... And if you do, you sort of like put yourself into this bondage that is not necessary. Um, you know, what about for teaching reasons? You know, that means, uh, you know, uh, if you ever, ever had to learn about another gender's anatomy, if it's wrong to see somebody else's nakedness, then wouldn't it be wrong to see a picture of that nakedness? How could you learn about the other gender's anatomy um, if, if, it, if it's a sin to, to view it? Uh, you know, changing, changing your children's clothes. You know, the, the, the passage also talks about uncovering the nakedness of your father and mother. So let's say you're taking care of your mother and your father, you know, and you need to get them changed. You know, they just soiled themselves. If it was a sin to see their nakedness, just view it, then you, you wouldn't be allowed to change them either. It would have to be the same gender. But I don't even know if you could, say, say use Leviticus 18 and 20 to, if you take the view, because it talks about uncovering your father's nakedness. So can then I even change my father's nappy when he's older? You know, because I'm not, if, if I take Leviticus 18 and 20 that way in terms of just viewing and not actually what it's intended, which is sleeping together. 